All right. Well, let's get going. Good morning. You look good. You look good. I think maybe you're dropping weight or maybe you're, you did something different with your hair. But, man, you look good today, so let's get going. Today is uh, Thursday, May 7th, 15th. This is your uh, daily Forex trading strategy session. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the chief FX marketer.com. We do these events every single day, 7.30 in the morning. It says 8.15. I usually go to, uh, I should probably change this. I usually go to 8.45. Um, you know, I promise a little and give a lot, hopefully. And then uh, tomorrow, to do this event tomorrow at epicstreet.com. And it's trade on farm payroll five month 108. Holy smokes. Uh, just it's amazing to me. Hang on, something's having a heart attack. Anyways, uh, when we're done these events, I upload them to YouTube. Uh, I do it immediately, but it takes a while to render and stuff. So, you know, you'll, you'll see the video up there usually within the hour. And, uh, of course, if you... Uh, if you miss the event, whole thing. Each video is over an hour long. Um, or you can go through and catch something that uh, we did cover and you thought was interesting. You want to go back and revisit that. It'll always be there for you. Uh, do me a favor. Um, take the time to document what you learned or what your takeaways were. Uh, YJ's been doing a really good um, job of that where he'll actually take notes during the session and then post his notes. Take some, I don't know, a few seconds, but I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, currently there's something like 75 uh, videos up there for probably, you know, 80 or 90 hours worth of education. Cool. You know what? This is slow as molasses. Hang on. Let me work on something. Let's run the uh, B-roll. Let me remind you that the purpose of this presentation is education, trading and investing is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, never predicts future results. So always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. This presentation is moving slowly. Anyways. Aussie uh, jobs report, negative number. That's not good. Japan PMI, first expansion in three months. Whale oil be. Okay. By the way, going back to this RBA, their monthly statement or their monetary statements coming up. So um, that's cool. We'll just move sort of into the forward looking arena but uh, Japanese PMI first expansion in three months good job Japan they're not contracting anymore we'll see that's not a huge number and of course one data point a trend does not make oh yeah this thing in uh, in the UK they're having an election um, voting polls end at 5 p.m. New York time So, well, we'll see how that impacts things. I'm not going to give you a guess on who's going to win or how it will impact the markets. Just manage your risk. Remember, we're not guessers, are we? There's a big move in the bond market. Uh, you know, people were buying bonds because the ECP were going to buy them, so they're going to front run them. And that seems to have stopped lately. So interest rates are moving. Uh, China has not been doing any OMOs. Uh, those are open market operations. That's where the central bank goes in and either buys bonds to put money into the market 
or sells bonds to take money out of the market. In this case, uh, they haven't been doing anything for a while. Six consecutive hold. So again, just to catch up what's happened recently, um, yesterday's ADP report uh, was disappointing. Less than 170. We want to see it, you know, two ten, uh, 200, maybe even 250, right? So 160, whatever it was, 168. Uh, not very good. Okay. So like what we talked about, the 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 view now, the market's starting to wake up to this idea that the Fed's not going to raise interest rates in in, in June, let's say certainly. Uh, so maybe September, but maybe later than that, right? So that's what it's all about. So um, all that means is uh, you'll sell the Euro USD a little higher. But uh, we tickled some, you know, we tickled 114, so we're getting pretty close, I, I think. But anyways. And so anyways, so now the market's starting to think, like in, in these notes, it says perhaps even 2016. Remember, I've been telling you that um, for years years that it was going to be more like 216 anyways um yeah it's all the same nonsense so i just want to get into the technicals okay here we got british pound not very uh well it's been quite weak but maybe sort of stabilizing euro has been quite strong maybe you know maxed out swiss franc steady freddy up 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 and once again, Japanese yen was weak, was strong, and is weak again, right? Strong, anyway, strong in Asia maybe, down in Europe. U.S. dollar very weak. Aussie dollar was weak, was strong, was weak. <laughs> um, Kitty Cad. Well, compared to, so here on the right, Kiwi, which is weak. Over here is Aussie, which is weak. Kitty Cad, quite a bit stronger, huh? Quite a bit stronger. But when you see, generally speaking, um, weakness in the commodities, you could look at that as, you know, from a macro point of view and just say, you know, it's still, it, we're sort of in a risk-off market. Well, think about what were happened. Why did the stock market down? And we'll visit that technically, but, oh, my gosh. How terrible. Sorry. How terrible. See, that's the problem when you got 18 screens, right? You look good to me. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on. Uh, I'm going to get my drawing tool out. So we'll revisit that in a second. Hello, drawing tool. There we go. It's slow. Come on now. Okay, this is where we're. All right, so let's do this. Okay, this is British pound. Generally speaking, pound is weak. Let me change colors. Why not? Make it easy for you, right? So generally speaking, British pound is weak. Euro is fairly strong. is very strong. Yen quite weak. Now remember the correlation traditionally between Euro and Swissy have been quite strong. So US dollar very weak. Aussie dollar very weak. Canadian dollar moderately strong. Okay, so so let, let's talk about this. So what I was saying before is when you generally see relative weakness, I know the CAD's a little strong, but when you see relative weakness, it's uh, usually uh, risk off when you're looking at uh, the markets at a macro level. Now, remember what was going on. The S&P 500, uh, I don't know, a week ago or something like that, hit an all-time high. Not a bad time to start taking some profit, otherwise known as rebalancing. Okay, 
So anyways, uh, so markets can come down, fine. We're, we're more worried whether it's a reversal or not, right? And then what else do we have coming up now? Risk-wise, right? Well, you know, we have non-farm payrolls tomorrow. There was lots of stuff on the calendar this week. We have the UK elections. You know, so there, there's some risk, right? And once, once we get past these, maybe things will warm up. So we've had some significant moves. And, um, you know, I think we might be setting up for a pretty good week next week. And then a lot of these, um, the, <clears throat> a lot of these, let's say, long-term counter moves are, are reasonably understandable in the short term. Just comes down to how you trade it. So, anyways, non verbal small, big deal, right? So. So today. Canadian building permits, hoo ha! How exciting. Weekly unemployment claims, well, okay, well, we had disappointing ADP yesterday and non farm payrolls tomorrow, so, like, do we really care about weekly unemployment claims? So, uh, fairly quiet there. Great Asian session coming up. There's that RBA monetary policy stuff. And then tomorrow, Canadian jobs report, U.S. jobs report. Good. Okay. So we, you know, today should be quiet. Tomorrow, lots of things going on. So a, a good Asian session. Uh, a lot of Asia was on uh, holidays recently, so have everybody back. So you know, if we have, um, let's say, not incredibly surprising numbers out of. Um, out of NFP tomorrow, for example, then I think next week will just be fine. We'll continue mission, right? So where do you want to start? Um, Euro USD? Okay. And this up here is a weekly R1. You see how the top is exactly the weekly R1 to the pip? Even on the on the spike, it's still the pip, right? And I would also call it, um, you know, I would call it a spike level too, because we're talking about 1392. So why don't we call it 114? Okay. So you're your decision here is how you play this drop okay you can see the support you can play it like this and trade it to the top of the range which now actually the top is here right right or you play it like it's a lower low and you do this. And I'm not ready for that. So one of the things we discussed recently was waiting for the reversal pattern. And I think the bigger low would be like this. And then I would set that up. So if we do drop down to, let's say, 113, I think I would do a lower high, lower low scenario. So up to 1350 down. Okay, and then that, you know, th this the break of here and then the break of here would really set up a new bearish trend for this, and I and I, I my confidence would skyrocket. Okay, are we there yet? No, and even if it happened today, you know, we got tomorrow's risk. So, um, so I don't know. I'm going to play it cautiously. Okay, looks like it's trying to get through right now, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't mean I have to short it now. If I was so eager to short, you know, I should have shorted it here, right? So at this point, just it's let it break. So if it does go down here today, here's what I, I want to look for later. 
be cool if you were able to get a short at 1350 in Europe yes, uh, tomorrow. Jam your stop before NFP comes out. All right? And then what if NFP? Then this thing would drop from 1350 down to 12. Okay. Uh, you see this profitable trade of mine in the uh, market? Uh, 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 I'll tell you why. Everybody see the trade? This was the trade that I planned out yesterday, uh, New York afternoon. And I sold there with a stop at 14.10. And the idea was to play like a devil top. Okay. So you, what a, you know, so the risk here obviously is the fact that it was still on this time frame technically bullish, right? But a double top, a double top. And it had some divergence and stuff, right? So uh, aggressive trade, yes. I just want to point that out. Now, a higher time frame would, would be trading this whole thing that we're looking at, like, let's say, in an hourly chart. Someone would trade that like this is a double top now. There's not much difference. Okay. So the next level of support is going to be in here, more of 12. Okay. Or not 12, 13, I should say. And do you see this? That's pretty... Rock and uh, divergence, huh? So again, you know, it's one of these things like not a ripper awesome trade, but I had the resistance at 1350. I had a double top. I had a 5.8 cross. I had divergence in the direction of the trend. I knew it was aggressive. I left uh, like 60 pips as a stop, you know, um, Zai, you know. But now I would be a lot more confident now that it double topped and now it's made that low quite dramatically just in the last few minutes, right? Cool. Okay, you know what I think is happening. Do you remember that we just, uh, you know, the uh, the bullet point I had in the presentation? Um, I think you saw it. <laughs> I'm not sure if you did. Um, one of the things I put out is uh, dramatic moves in the European bond market. In particular, um, bond prices are, or uh, sorry, yields are rising. Okay, what does that say about the bond market? Yields are rising. What's happening to the bond prices? Because they're falling. And presumably, people are taking a break from fronting the ECB. So if if they're bond buyers that are exiting their long positions, where else buy bonds today if they wanted to buy bonds somewhere else? Let's say if they wanted to get out of European bonds, where else would they go? Oh, maybe the United States. Okay. And will they be able to buy the U.S. Treasuries with um, Euro?
Yeah. How, how many euros does a 10-year T-note cost? <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. It's an interesting coincidence. Yeah, they must convert their euros into dollars. So it's an interesting coincidence. I'll say that it wasn't part of my trade plan because I traded that yesterday, um, and that that's happened overnight. So it's an interesting coincidence of events. So we'll see what happens, right? Bond, you follow, yeah, but apparently it was, uh, oh, by the way, good to see you, Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. Um, it's, uh, the, I, the velocity overnight was, was dramatic. Okay. I, yeah, Peter, I believe you can. Which Peter is that? Is, is it Callahan? Oh, is that, is it, wow. Yeah, my gosh. Where you guys been? It's like so many people, the old team are just like showing up. Where you guys been? And <laughs> everyone's just rolling in like this week, like, hey, Wayne, I received 27 invitations. I've decided to take you up this week. Anyways, I miss you, buddy. Right on. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I believe you, you need an EA in, in to do that. And so you just Google, you know, SMS alert MT4. And there must be a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how's your trading been going, if you don't mind talking in front of uh, 47 people? Things been going good? We, we haven't been... We haven't talked in like what a year or two. Everything going good? Still riding to five. Ride to five, baby. Ride to five. Yeah, totally. Cool. Well, send me an email. Give me an update. Hey, guys, if you've traded with me for, let's say, a couple of years, but I haven't seen you in a while, but you know, you're, but you family, uh, send me an email. Give me an update. Let me know what you're doing, what's going on, and how it is. Okay? There's tons. Chat of the hut. I mean, come on. Yeah. Keep me up to date, guys. I care about you. Um, so anyways, um, that's that. It's, it's low, low, dramatically moving. I wonder if it's the bond market. It's, it's hard really to say, but I think it's an interesting coincidence. Now, if it is uh, a bond re market related thing, um, that could be our top that we've been looking for. I'm not ready to call that. Let me just, let me show you why. Um, looking at it on a different chart, and I guess it's probably like a Four hour or something. Um, I'm not going to call it a, a complete reversal until we're uh, dramatically lower than this area. So therefore, the plan would be something like this. This is a four hour chart, right? So let's say we come down here. It's going to bounce there because it's support. Let's say it comes up and then it's going to come down and then it's going to bounce in this area. Why? Because it's support. This is what it does. <laughs> come on. And then it then it does this, and then it does that. Let me change colors because I think that's hard to see. Let's go dark blue here. Okay, so on a micro time frame, it's going to do this, and then probably on a big, bigger time frame, let's say another micro, it'll do this, and then it's going to do this, this, and this, and then we're on the free and clear plan. So let me change colors again. For on simple terms, um, green, no, kind, yeah. Um, on simple terms, what we're looking at here is this, 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 and this. And that's your classic head and shoulders reversal pattern, okay? 
And is it happening now up here? What it could be. If it's fundamentally related, yes, it could be. Can everybody see my head holders pattern that I just drew? Adam says the chart. All right, well, then it looks good. All right, so that's what I'm thinking, okay? That's what I'm thinking. Am I ready to make that call now? No, but, you know, to me is like 114 is like almost 115. So 115 is the psychological level. So I don't know. Like, you know, it really could, but it's a guess at this point. Uh, all I know is I'm short and I'm profitable. So who gives two hoots, right? So we got a long ways to go before the Kool-Aid starts to taste good. But it uh, it's something, right? All right? How about our pig yen? Yeah, a little disappointing it broke down, right? So I've been teaching you the hammock strategy what do you do when you get a lower low in this case when i say hammock okay now do you actually do you actually see yourself running through the steel hallways of a battleship Maybe climbing up a ladder to, 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 to get to your battle station. Do you get a picture? No, I'm serious. Kind of. Do you see? Do you see yourself laying in the hammock, and all of a sudden, an alarm goes off, and you jump out of your hammock like battle stations, battle stations. Because that's what I'm actually trying to do. I'm trying to speak. To your visual brain because if I can get that there because remember how does this get triggered when you see a lower low or a higher high when you see a breakout so I'd like to talk now because you're listening to me. I'd like to talk to your visual brain to say if you see this breakout I want you to see the in the inside of a battleship I want you to see a ham. And then your intellectual brain says, I know what that is. It's not a battleship at all. It's a breakout. I need to use a Fibonacci, you know, uh, right, to catch that. So anyways, that occurred yesterday. You get your breakout. You measure it. And oh, snap. Okay, 618 Fibonacci retracement. Also, and this is something else that I've been preaching a long time, it's not just the Fib. In fact, you know, who knows? The fibs are probably just a coincidence. But maybe it's an Elliott wave. I mean, it's all variously, basically the same thing. I think one really important thing when I'm doing price action type trading like this, breakout retracement, is the previous support becomes resistance and vice versa. Okay, it's not that perfect, but I want you to definitely bust out the fib and measure this and say to yourself, somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement, I want all. And then you say to yourself, where's the old support? Because it might be in there. And you could even guess that it's not going to be the 382. It might be. There's stuff going on there. But it could go higher because that's where the support is. And in fact, in this case, it did. Mm, you know. Just whatever. So, for example, I think if it came into this zone in here and you shorted, and your stops here.
Can you afford that? Can you short? Can you afford to short at uh, eighty-one fifty and have your stop way up here at eighty-two fifty? See, for a lot of people, you can't swallow the 100 pips, right? Yes, Adam's making it a point. Adjust your lot size accordingly. If a 100 pip loss hurt a lot, you're probably over leveraged. This is the beast. Okay, another name for this currency pair besides the beast is the Widowmaker. Okay, if you can't handle 100 pips on the pound yen, you probably shouldn't be trading the pound yen. It just, this pair moves dramatically like that. Just look at this little bounce here. It's a little bounce at 81, and it went not to 81.50, but to basically 82. Not quite, but you know, basically 8180. I mean, that's just an 80 pip pullback. So if you're, this is why if you're not a good trader and you lack discipline, um, you, you're shorting down in here because of the big red handle. But you don't, don't I, I don't teach trading, selling red candles, right? What do I do? I sell green candles. So if you're up here at 81.50 or, or, or didn't get the entry in a small time and waited a little higher, you know, up into here, well, then you were patient enough and now you, now you can use a smaller, uh, smaller stop because all you're trying to do is have your stop of the highest high. That's all. That's what you're supposed to do. That's just technical analysis, right? And... If you can't afford the 100 pips, you got two choices. You got two choices of what you can do. It's not a tough decision, as you can see, right? Um, so what you do is you don't trade it at all because you can't afford it. Because you don't want to trade it poorly, right? So you just can't afford that opportunity. Or... You cut your lot size in half or or in eighths or sixteenths, you make your lot size smaller, so money wise the risk is more affordable. So let's say you, you traditionally only have a fifty pip stop. Okay, let's say you trade um, two lots at fifty pips each. Okay? Now to get this trade, you need a hundred lots. So what you do is you right. You, or you, I mean, 100 pips. So now you got to cut your lot size in half. So now your 100 pips is the same as, you know, 100 pips with one lot is the same as 50 pips with two lots, money-wise. Okay? And that's how you can afford that opportunity. But if you just can't do that, like you trade one lot and you can't cut it any smaller than that, um, move on.com. Because again, if you're lazy and you, you sell here, you, you didn't wait for your entry or whatever, and then you, you're using like a 25 pip stop on pound yen, you might as well just give your money away. Right? Just throw it away. I used to say, you know, get all your friends to come over to your house, have a big party, get the music out. Uh, get some food, some drinks, and then um, right sort of at prime time when the crowd is thickest, have everyone gather around your fire pit and take a huge stack of cash and burn it in front of everybody. All right? Now, first of all, when you lose a bunch of money in Forex, you hold it to yourself, right? You don't tell your loved ones. You don't tell your friends. They're like, hey, how's that Forex thing going? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, it's fine. And uh, how, how's your job going? <laughs> right? But you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. Good, good, good. Um, but so you're ashamed and you hold it 
you can keep it to yourself and stuff like that. You've totally thrown the money away. You were a liquidity event for a professional trader. But if you actually burn cash in front of all your friends, you'd have that you'd have that story forever. They're like, dude, do you remember that time you threw that big party and you just took like three thousand dollars in cash and burned it? Oh my god, I couldn't believe that. That was ridiculous. <laughs> You're you crazy, man. I like you. You're crazy. Right? I mean, a whole different experience. So, look, you if you're going to throw your money away, at least have a party, right? Have something you, you and your buddies can talk about forever. So, if do it right, if you're going to do it, right? So, if you traded here and you were aggressive, and I understand all the reasons why you did it here, that, but nonetheless, your stop should be here. Right? I mean, what else would you do? Well, okay. Right. The question here is you're not going to learn anything if you burn the money. So tell me what the vast majority of, of uh, Forex traders learn when they lose money on a stupid trade. What does the vast majority of those traders learn? Are they keeping trade journals? Are, are they on a regular basis analyzing their trade history and identifying their strengths and weaknesses? Are they absolutely focused in manifesting their progress by taking those weak, weaknesses and very specifically working on things to, prove, uh, to turn those weaknesses into the strengths? Honestly, right? No, of course not. Right. So again, for the vast majority of people that just want to get into Forex and get rich, burn the money in front of all your friends and get a story out of it. Instead of being embarrassed that you, you know, you pop five grand into an account and just traded like a, a like an, um, like a liquidity event for someone that they had patience and discipline. Right. I say stand up and work your butt off. I used to say, you know, uh, the work will set you free, right? And then I found out that's what the sign above Auschwitz said. So I, I don't like that saying anymore. But, you know, what you should work your butt off so much that, you know, the, the universe should will your success only because you've worked so hard, uh, many times harder than the other person on the other side of your trade. And you just deserve the success somehow, some way, not because you were entitled um, not, you know, but because you earned it through hard work, patience and discipline, blood, sweat and tears for years. If, if you do that, honestly, on, on the long run, mo uh, a lot of people find success. And we know in Forex, success pays too much. We know that by definition, right? We know way more many way many more people lose than win, but the ones that win get 100% of the money, right? Who else gets the money besides the winners, right? So it's right. So I used to say it's the you know the, the work that sets you free, but um, it, it sort of is just minus the whole you know Holocaust stuff. So. You know, are you actually keeping a trade journal? Are you taking detailed notes? Do your plans actually have, I mean, let, let's even go farther back than that. Do you actually have a bias? Do you actually know if you're a bull or a bear? If I said, uh, tell me about Aussie Dollar, what are your thoughts? Would you have a thought? Could we talk about it for a half an hour? Could we debate? Could you provide evidence like, oh, well, I've read through these speeches by the RBA. You know, Gover uh, Governor Stevens says this, but if you look at these subcomponent of this thing, uh, I see this other thing going on. And so, you know, here's my outlook, especially if you look at recovery, maybe in the Baltic Dry Index and, you know, the outlook for prices for iron ore or coal over the next two years and what, you, what the, the ECB is doing eventually is going to trickle down to global macroeconomics. And so here's my two-year outlook, blah, 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 blah. And you could just go to town with your opinion. And you say, well, therefore, technically, this is what I'm doing now. On the medium term, 
I'm doing this. In the short term, I'm looking for that. And all of a sudden, you could just blow me away with your big fat brain. And, right? And then on top of that, because that just shows me you did your homework, and then on top of that, you have, you have skills, technically, to enter your trades at support if you're a bull or at resistance if you're a bear. You have the patience and discipline to let the technical analysis um, appear as you want it, and you trade on your own terms under your own rules because you have control and consistency. And, and because of that, through empirical study of your actual trading history, you're a confident trader. That is what makes you successful. And some people say, well, you know, moving averages, they, I thought they would work, but now they're lagging, so I'll use Elliott Wave, and I'll study Elliott Wave, and then Elliott Wave doesn't work, and oh, well, I'll try this other thing, and if that doesn't work, I think I'll buy that options course. Maybe options are my way to go, right? You just rotate through the industry, and you're just a liquidity event for some other market participant. Okay? So you stick with me, kid, and I'll take care of you. But you're going to have to do the work. I'll just open the doors for you and let you, you know, share with the things that you need to focus on. Uh, but let me tell you, it will be blood, sweat, and tears for years. But if you actually can pull that off, if you're actually willing to do that, because, listen, most people fail because they're, they're, they're incapable of working that hard, or, right? Or just simply unwilling. They're like, yeah, I want to be rich, but I don't want to work like that. Do you guys remember that video I did about two weeks about two weeks ago about ridiculous, sickening work ethic? If you, if you can do that and put some skills behind it, you're going to be a millionaire. Not today or tomorrow, but over time, I would bet on you, not against you. The beast that says combining options and forex could you know I love binaries, man. Binaries are cool. So, anyways, let me get off my soapbox, but um, I don't know how we got into that, but it's important to say from time to time. Especially with the beast, right? Let's just catch up on oil here. Oh, FX options? Uh, uh all right, so like, what are you going to do? Um, strangle? Are you going to straddle? Are you good? I mean, um, you know, it's funny. I've passed the test. I was actually, you know, I've actually been doing and calculating options and uh, um, pricings and premiums and using black shoal models and. So I, I've been doing this, and back when I was a, a, a commodity trading advisor, you know, I passed Series 3, which is like a four- or five-hour test. There's like four subject areas, so they're individual tests, and you've got to get 70% on each test, um, you know, one of them being options and option strategy. So let me tell you, you know, somehow, some weird way, uh, I'm considered an expert, at least past the industry tests on these things. Um, but options, just not my thing. So it gets complicated. So, like, I'll, I'll look, here's my screenshot thing. Okay. And look, I'm just, this, this is what I was working on yesterday hockey stick diagrams of long Microsoft. 25 calls with $1 premiums. I mean, real simple stuff. But um, so I, I'm telling you, I'm actually working on option models and pricing models. And, um, and, and you know, like, like a strangle, for example, you, you buy a call at uh, 25 with a premium of one, but then you buy a put at a lower premium um, or at a lower strike price, and, and if the volatility is high enough, fine, you know, but, and then going with different models of that, just, you know, it's complicated, my friend. And lots of professionals 
use it because what happens is you, you have a predefined um, risk that you end up knowing if things get bad, um, how much you're going to lose. You already know that up front. Uh, so that's limited if you're if you're if you're doing two options at once, right? Right, you're long a call and you're longing a put, or maybe you 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 buy a put and sell a put, and whatever the the strategies are. But if you lay it all out, you should know your break even point one way or the other. You should know how much money you you could possibly lose because one is losing money and the other option is making money, right? Or the other way, if you if your long one's making money but your your short one's losing money, then you should be able to calculate that. So that's the nice thing where you walk away, you're like, I'm either going to lose 15 bucks or I'm going to make 15 bucks. Uh, for me, what works better for me is I would say, look, oil is up high. We're getting near to sell zone. A cash position I'd like to hold for a while, um, but it hasn't quite reversed, so it's a high risk thing. So I think I'll, I'll short with a binary option and I'll either make the 15 bucks or I'll lose the 15 bucks, but I don't need to buy a put and sell a put or buy a put and buy a call. And, and, and you know, I, I think probably just the, the the cost of the premiums to purchase these things are probably significantly higher than just trading a binary to begin with. So, um, you know, it's one of these things. Uh, we could talk about it and debate it for a long time and never really be right. So it comes down to what you like and your personality um, and stuff. I don't like calculating with spreadsheets and calculators how I make money or if I made money on that trade or not. Um, it just doesn't feel right to me. I just don't like it. Uh, but there are other things I do like, and, and obviously I share them with you every single day. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind selling a binary up high here and giving it, you know, a week roll over. And make just as money as if I had a, a, a strangle or a straddle or whatever your option strategy was, um, and probably have lower premium costs. But at, you know, and then at the end of the day, I'm not an options trader. I'm a foreign currency trader. I, I trade the foreign exchange. I love it with with all my bones and my might. Um, I've never traded anything else. I, I I was never a stock trader. I was never an options trader. I, I trade uh, commodities and stuff because I'm a currency trader and I found out though they're predictable because I understand the Forex market, but at the end of the day, I prefer the Forex. I like the way it gets taxed and treated here in the United States. And I'm, I'm just all the way through um, a currency trader. So I, as a currency trader, what I like to trade best are binary options on currencies, and I, I like to use them to either scalp or hedge my, my cash positions. <laughs> right? So uh, um, your FX options, uh, to me, it's a whole different world. Um, right? I know enough to sound stupid, um, and that's enough for me, I think. At least I've passed the test a couple of times, right? But like again, having to write candles, uh, uh, hockey stick diagrams to figure out. Okay, well, if I buy the Microsoft call at twenty-five, there's my strike price is twenty-five. The premium's one dollar. My break-even is going to be at twenty-six dollars. So if it's less than twenty-five, I'll lose the one dollar. That's my predefined downside. But if it goes up, blah 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 blah. And that's of course that that is like kindergarten level complexity. Um, you start doing strangles and straddles, and, and uh, it, it gets so complicated where you honestly need to diagram it to figure out what price needs to do for you to turn a profit. And I just don't think that way, right? Like, for example, uh, let me whiteboard this. I, I don't know how we get into these things, but you guys inspire me. 
Um, okay, let's talk about this. All right. Here's this. Um, this is so slow. I don't know why. All right. These are prices. Let's say you, your stock is uh, $10. Right, there's another, you know, this, I think maybe, you, oh, let me continue. Uh, $10, um, $12, $15, $20, $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000
But if it goes the other way, you're going to make some money the other way. Uh, and those wins are going to offset with some losses on the other one. And you'll make some money. But if it doesn't move $3 one way or the other, so now like within a $6 window, then you're going to lose either or both based on you know the premiums and stuff, right? So it's just, it gets, you know, and what you're saying is in one or the other, that's different too. And so what a, a strangle, like I was trying to say, what you're trying to do is um, you're trying to like do things like keep your low, your costs low, you're trying to limit your downside risk. Um, and so it's all predefined. If it doesn't move enough, the most you'll lose is, let's say, a couple of bucks. But the most you can win is maybe a couple of bucks. So when you look at it more like risk-reward ratio, it's similar. Um, but you're talking about an OCO to get in one way or the other. In this case, you're, you're both long and short. So I think it would be closer to say like, um, like what I've done in, in the past, if you guys go to YouTube and watch some of the videos on, on how to, um, like I remember when I talked about how to buy the, the yen pairs, let's say you thought the yen pairs were going to go up. How do you buy it here before it's gone up? Guess? Well, one thing that you could do is you could buy the cash market, right? And then sell the derivative, in this case, the binary. And if it does go down, your binary is going to make money. But if it doesn't, all you lose is cost, right? And then you're long cash. And your, your binary is simply insurance. So you lost a little bit of money on your binary. But what it did was cut, cut your initial risk by 40%. Now, if so, if you lose your binary, it was an insurance policy. Everyone with insurance policies usually lose money, right? Because most people don't cash in on their insurance. Most people don't crash their cars. Most people's houses don't burn down, right? Th those are the same thing, right? They're they're insurance policies. So in this case, if your if the market does reverse and you were right, you lowered your risk by forty percent. But now you're long cash, which has unlimited upside, right? Binaries and other options, they don't have unlimited upside, right? Now you have unlimited upside and you're collecting interest, which a, an option doesn't pay either. So I want to be long cash as much as possible, but I want to lower my downside risk. So in that sense, I'm long the cash and I'm short the derivative. Right? Yeah, Peter's like, then you got delta, you got delta risk, you got gamma risk. Um, and just, oh my gosh, not interested. I think if Forex didn't exist the way that it exists now, I think I would find it interesting and I would have to study it and stuff. But it, it's just not an appealing alternative to me. I love what we do. I don't know if I understand that. I love what we do. Um, and any you know and, and options in comparison just too complicated binaries work really well like i explained to you just there they work really well together i also like scalping with uh, scalping with them because i have my predefined risk and um and it's similar to an oco except now i don't have to manage it either and i don't have to worry about gaps and spikes and and choppiness and so on and so forth. And the thing with the cash market, like let's say um, you're trading change now and I sold here, okay? If I was in the cash market and my target was here, what happens if it comes up and then and doesn't come down and hit my target? Well, I, then I got to figure out when I get out and do I get out of break even? Do I take half the profit? Do I take one quarter of the profit? You know, it, it, it's a complicated um, scenario. If I shorted here with the binary, my target was down here and my option expired and, uh, and price was still here, I get paid for the whole thing. One, two, binaries rock. Right? I get paid for the whole kit and caboodle because I'm right. Price is lower than that. And that's all I said it was. So sometimes it's really cool for scalping. 
because I say, look, I'm going to be in this scalp for 20 minutes max because that's time to expiration, and I just need to be one pip right, and I'll get paid for the whole kit and caboodle with icing on top. Lovely, totally mom. Okay. So, like, for example, if I wanted to long this now, see, if I was a bull, I would be buying this. Do you understand that? That's how complicated it is to me. Okay? We're, we're right here on that EMA. There's something going on in here. It looks like a psych level. Previous support. Or, sorry, previous should be support. I would consider longing this. But that looks dangerous, doesn't it? After that big red. But remember, I don't short big red candles, do I? So um, how do you tiptoe into that um, cautiously? Maybe you start with a binary. Or maybe you long the cash and short the binary. So, right? And you cut that risk in, uh, almost in half. You understand? So I could just immediately, I can long this and then short the binary. If, if, the, if this comes down lower, I'm going to lose some cash. In the, I'm going to lose some money in the cash market, but I'm going to make some money in the binary market. So I take my loss in the cash, or I get stopped out. And, and I make some money on the binary, not enough to cover all my losses on the cash position, but 40% of them, 40% of that loss. And I had the opportunity, the unlimited upside opportunity with, um, with interest. And not on the money I risked, on the $100,000, remember, right? So now you're getting like, you're making huge interest. Even, even if the carry is only 1%, but if you're leveraged 100 to 1, right? That now you got a hundred percent interest annually <laughs> on the money you actually put at risk. I mean, oh snap! So that's how I like options, and to me that just makes a ton of sense. And it's easy peasy lemon squeezy, and it's cheap, right? It's just I with and with, at Trader's Way, what I can manage it on my MT4 account and like. Just awesome blossom. Okay. Can anybody tell that I <laughs> that I love what I do? Does that come across? Does it sound like it's boring to me? <laughs> like uh, I don't, uh oh man, this is I mean awesome. Here's our trade that we set up uh, three weeks ago, guys. No. So my, my timing's not that good. But boy, oh boy, what if the price was right? Okay, the timing, I, I'm like, I th it looks like I'm about a week early, right? But the price, we're still at that 382. Let me back out. This, that's the DAX. How about um, what if this dramatic um, change in trading habits overnight in European bonds doesn't mean people uh, they're moving to the United States to buy U.S. Treasuries? What if they're getting out of bonds and buying stock that could be possible too right so we peaked out in march right every idiot now just buying at the very top because of quantitative easing they didn't buy at the bottom when they were planning their easing so you know Pigs get slaughtered, right? And then it drops for five or six weeks back to the 3 8 Fibonacci retracement. 
So what happens now? Now the pros got in. They've taken their profits, right? They've booked their profits because they, they were front-running quantitative easing early. Now they cash out at the top. It comes down, and right when all the amateur traders give up, it's time to get back in. That's what the plan is. Um, and so, again, probably a huge coincidence. Probably means nothing. But it might be reversing right at the uh, 3 a Fibonacci retracement. The oscillator on the four-hour looks fine. But also, like I said, overnight, there was a dramatic change in behavior, trading behavior in European bond market. Well, does that mean they're, they're, buying, they're, they're selling bonds and buying stock? Well, that would be pretty traditional, right? I mean, it might be. I don't know. If it, if it goes lower than this, then forget it. That's all nonsense. So I can't tell if I'm right or wrong yet, but it's a very interesting coincidence. Or maybe they're getting out of European bonds and they're going to buy U.S. bonds. Well, then if that happens, dump a Euro bonds to buy U U.S. bonds, then the dollar would get strong today. Oh, snap. That's what I'm doing here. Right? I should be up, I think I'm up about 80, 80 pips right now. Nice! So, you know, who knows? Who knows where this will lead? Um, do I want gold to go up or down? What's my bias? What have I told you? Cool. Do you think uh, the psychological level of 1,200 was important? That's 1,200 right there. You think that was possibly uh, important? And then what? This is the part where it becomes technically bearish. Okay? So there's old uh, resistance. It should become future support, which it did. Then the lower high. There's your shields up red alert, right? And then that support becomes resists on the breakout in the future, which we just talked about earlier, right? This is your hammock retracement. So I got to do the fib to stay consistent with the teaching. And where do you sell Fibonacci wise? Somewhere between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement which is there, ideally somewhere around the old, in this case because we're selling, somewhere around the old support should be future resistance. There it is. Okay. Down. Lower low. What do you do? Hammock. Cool. Okay. Then what? Lower low. Hammock. Old support becomes future resistance. <laughs> it's boring, I know. But uh, so on and so forth. I have time for one more. You pick. Let's do a big old vote. What do you want me to cover? It's been uh, 71 minutes already. Man, the time goes by. But it's interesting that at least you can scalp gold, right? I bet you if scalping gold binaries might be more affordable. USD, Swiss franc, kiwi, pound, kitty cat. Well, you know, I guess we haven't done kiwi for a while. Uh, kiwi what? Kiwi buck. All right. Up or down? <laughs> well, let's see.
And I just love your dressy ways. So, as you can see, we have this as a short um, that we set up at the end of the year. If you measure it, okay, if you measure the top, which I think is a valid top, you measure the bottom, which I think is a valid bottom. This right here is 786 Fibonacci retracement. And you'll notice we, we topped out exactly 78.6. Not 79, not 78, 78.6. So is this plausibly a, a, a technical area of importance? Seems pretty important to me. There's the lowest low. When I yell hammock, what do you do? Yeah. So breakout retracement, fine, fine, fine. So this could be the beginning of a beautiful thing. Uh, the, the, the issue is the 786 is not good resistance. So the maximum you could expect would be to double bottom out. And that's even... So I would take this area first and have that you know is the area and prepare to trade it as a range for now just because you you okay like for example if retracement was down 382 and down i would say price is going to fall to the 1618 fibonacci extension lower but a 786 says if you're lucky, it will double bottom. So that's how I'm going to play it. Um, maybe it goes down to the double bottom, or maybe it's not quite ready yet. Okay? So I would change my tune if it did this, let's say, and then broke that double bottom. Okay? Then I'm going to look, retrace, and then reset for a new move. And I would remeasure the fib. Okay, so at this point, um, the target would just be the bottom of the uh, of the the current conservative range. So uh, you know, again, I already have this marked out here, but we can do it again if you wish. And that that that's sort of it. Okay, I can readjust this a little bit. Okay, but you know it's true. Ooh ooh ooh. But we, we've had this measured since the uh, first or second week of this year. So it's been um, five months that we've had this set up. Okay. Notice some of these smaller breaks, you know. Nice little technical analysis, right? Good stuff. Good. Ish good. See this low? Or low, right? Just nice. Good stuff. So we'll see. Uh, it's had a nice run. I am growing cautious for now. Anybody use a cloud? There's my version of the cloud. Still bearish, but uh, I would be mm, I'd be growing conservative. Okay. Like I said, I think things are going to get good for next week. So I'm already looking forward to that. Tomorrow I'll be at FX Street for non-farm payrolls number 108. Okay. So um, I hope to see you there at FX Street. You'll need to register. It takes, uh, um, you know, three seconds or whatever. So... Uh, Thank you for being on my team. Thank you for spending the last uh, 75 minutes. Some of you guys logged in about a half an hour early, so even longer than that. That's cool.
don't mind uh, hanging with you guys. In fact, I enjoy it. So uh, thank you for being clients of uh, uh, tradersway.com. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. And please leave a, please go back and review yesterday's video and leave a comment. Would you? Would you do that for me? Please leave a comment on yesterday's video.